Hi, how's it in the name of Christ? How you doing? It's your girl Cranky. Garabo. I hope you're good. I hope you're peachy. I hope you're stellar. And I hope you're in a neat little bunch. If you're not, welcome to the party. Story of my life. Okay, uh, so let me just put some caveats out there. Kindly look out for my captions. They are not always accurate. They sometimes use a small g for God. They sometimes misspelled all together. I'm sorry for all the shoveling around. I am trying to find my bearings, my situation. I'm trying to situate it further. It's cold. Mm. Yeah, um, my goodness, like I'm losing my train of thought. I'm just so tired with spiritual war. Anyway, whatever. Mm. I believe I was talking about my captions. Uh, kindly look out for them. They're not always accurate. They sometimes use a small g for God. They sometimes the wrong word altogether or they're misspelled, like stuff like that. Yeah, that's not me. It's not what I would have done, but it appears to be what has been done anyway. Okay. One day in the future, God willing, I'll edit them, but I don't think there's a future. Secondly, I'm very potentially wearing application makeup. If I am, you'll know. If I'm not, you'll also know. Um, if I am wearing app makeup, then welcome to the party. Did I just say that again? Whatever, look guys, I'm just, I'm so distracted. But it's okay, it's okay, it's okay, it's okay, I'll get to the point. And then I have, sorry, a segment. Mm, yeah, proper, it's a, um, oh god, have mercy. An empathy segment, I'm pinching my cheeks to display that when you prick me, I bleed. Um, when you punch me, I say ouch, etc. All different kinds of stuff of that nature. So it would be really great if you stayed your hand from doing that. Anyway, whatever, look, I just want to get this out of the way. Okay, yeah, the intention is to do that. To blush my cheeks, to help you see that I've got blood in my body. Yeah, so we're done. Alrighty, so it is the 29th of May. 2024 but it's actually the 28th because i've hopped over into the next day so um hallelujah anyway cool beans and bananas i don't want to be here long i'm tired but i'm, I'm always tired <laughs> whoa mm, spiritual war i don't care anymore you know uh, I, I, guys, um, I'm, oh God, have mercy. I'm not that bad at any, y'all. Oh, goodness, wow. I don't care. I don't care. I don't care, but we're gonna talk anyway. I mean, I haven't been caring. It's been a thing that I don't care, but, you know, they don't seem to care that I don't care. I'm very tired. Oh, goodness. This, uh, 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 whatever. If this is not a life. If this thing that you're living, Anyway, sorry. I don't know who told you that this is a life, but it's not a life. You're gonna get hurt. Listen, okay. I'm sorry I will speak English going for after all I am coming for an American audience, so uh can't be speaking my languages. I'm so tired. Mm. We're going home. We're leaving. We're going home in the rapture. We're getting caught up in the sky. We're going in the clouds. We are about to float. And when that happens, it's a very plummy like I'm sorry. You're gonna be chilling with your tight pants. Cause you're in a tight spot now. Emma Son Twain. And you are going to have such a hard time understanding Grinch up the truth because at churches, yeah. Mm. <sighs> you're gonna be having such a hard time understanding the truth. Cause you will have put yourself in a position to suffer, you know what I mean? But anyway, whatever, let's just get to the point, alright? Like, I, I just, I really need to get the point out there. I don't know what's happening. Where's Allah? Oh, somebody tell me. Yeah, you don't have to. Whatever, okay? Listen, guys, um, I'm not doing this. I don't want to sing. I don't want to do anything. I just, you know what, guys? I'm exhausted. I don't even know what to do. And that's a good thing, isn't it? You know, there the, are the attempts. Okay, let's talk about this, now. The, you know, the thing about witchcraft, like, it's... I'm tired. The thing about witchcraft, ne, baloi, witches. I'm I'm speaking English. Please don't leave me, English audience. I I need you, cause I'm done with these other randos. Okay, I'm done. Listen, uh, the thing about witchcraft is that it apparently allegedly is anonymous, ne? It's apparently allegedly anonymous. Yes, yeah. People do it from like a distance. That's the thing that actually attracts you guys to sorcery. Yeah, that's what's good. Hmm. It is the veil of anonymity. It draws you, clawing into it, grooving your claws into it like a beast, precisely because it promises you a veil of secrecy. And that's about to be blown out the water. 
So I'm gonna, I'm gonna help you, like, I'm trying to disincentivize wishes from witchcraft, like, what is going on? I'm tired of Corbella, like, cause I'm tired of people doing these things because they trust that nobody's gonna see them and on top of that they you can always just lean on the fact that people gonna be at you thinking your victims are crazy when they suspect you as in i'm done uh that was a sign that i'm done burping evidence in crunch up like eating food and then you're done it's like oh you just burp i'm finished mm. i'm done but let's just get into it anyway seeing as i'm done already i guess we're, we're, we're starting to be done at the end of this video i'll be truly done listen so ish y'all ish anyway okay let's get into it so all right if you guys have studied um freud's theory of the psyche okay you will know that this here is not gonna work out for you so the field of, of psychology all right was concocted from the orifices of mankind as a pseudoscience right to explain the unexplainable because the, you could not just be dealing with objective Western medicine on its own to, you know, just deal with life. Because it was evident, it was clear that there was something else regulating us in this world. So psychology popped up out of the woodworks and it became a whole science. But, like a pseudoscience. But, um, I like to say that psychologists are these dudes and dudettes that, because of their human nature being deceitful above all things and desperately wicked in their hearts because of being born dead in trespasses and sins because of being born rejecting god hating him rather than attribute all the other things that are not explainable by western medicine to god basically just admitting that he exists they came up with a whole science they came up with psychology and the thing about uh the devil is that he is a uh he, he uses the truth right and then sprinkles a, like some you know lies all up in there that's why in the bible it is written that a little leaven leavens the whole loaf the, the whole lump yeah the devil is not gonna rock up to you with a black red and white pink and purple rainbow lie that you can see for what it is like all up in your grill obviously this is a lie right nah it's going to rock up with the whole load of truth and then be leavened that you might be nicely deceived as a lump of dough Mm. Now that we've put that out there, psychology, the only reason why upon initially concocting, initially concocting the science, the pseudoscience, the reason why it didn't get immediately thrown out the water is because it actually had some truth to it. It, it, it was so relatable by so many people that they couldn't just throw it out. So now there's like a whole field created of professionals that are out here sitting on a couch, listening to your stories and whatnot, um, trying to comfort you, heal you from the thing that you're going through emotionally and psychologically and mentally all that jazz okay right oh this pseudoscience was a replacement for religion because of the fact that not everybody was happy to embrace religion it was unseen they wanted some other explanation however within the field of psychology there are truths therein that it's like mankind you know searched and found certain truths but not the whole truth because they didn't find christ do you understand what i'm saying the way that the devil likes it only just partial three quarters in but not the whole race uh and i mean he in so far as he deceives you at all that's all that matters because you could be 99 percent right but if you have not found christ you're just it's pointless everything is pointless so the devil does not care how close you are to the truth just in so far as you never get to the truth he's good so psychology caught because of the fact that it was a nice alternative to the existence of god to explain what are these things that we are dealing with okay that cannot be explained by western medicine by modern medicine by some um what you call this man this thing that you look into microscope and whatnot you you cannot look into the pathogens of it they are unlike an atom that you know you can ultimately see under a microscope if you really really dig deeply they are invisible they are invisible yeah that's what's good psychology was actually trying to explain invisible things and it's written in god's word that people are without excuse okay in romans 1 when they don't come to believe in god precisely because of psychology in other words the invisible qualities of god are all over creation there are evidences of the truth of god everywhere but people like to get 99 percent into the truth and not a hundred and that still condemns unfortunately for you it still condemns if you never arrive at the truth and there's only one his name is jesus the truth is absolute he is the way the truth and the life 
No one comes to the Father except through him, the Father of whom is God. So therefore no one comes to God except through Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ of which is also God. There are not three gods, there is one God, three persons. That's not something we're going to get into right now. Okay, very well. Cool beans and banana peels. So if the devil can keep you all nicely deluded into imagining that you're onto something, he will enable you to make a whole bunch of money with a pseudoscience that's going to branch out and have all different kinds of departments. And it, it's going to be so intense and so extreme, the pseudoscience, that ultimately it's going to start to become somewhat like even a whole full-on thriving science. Uh, wait, is that now you've got psychiatrists? So you all know that psychiatrists have got to actually go to med school, unlike psychologists, right? So they're actual doctors that can prescribe medication because they managed to find a way to actually cure psychological disorders using western medicine pharmacia like look at that aren't you dealing with the depression in your brain using like pills whoa hey so maybe it's not so much of a pseudoscience is it except it is except it is it still is a pseudoscience because even the usage of these um mind altering drugs to you know stabilize you because of some psychological disorder is exactly what the devil intended the human race to do to keep on resorting to drugs, keep on resorting to anything except God. Creation is teeming at the folds. Do you understand what I'm saying? With solutions to everything from God, invisible qualities. It's written in God's word that it is the glory of God to conceal a matter and the glory of kings, otherwise known as men, human beings at all, is to search it out. So research and study, scientific research or any kind of research, really, uh, research and development is something that is the glory of men, according to the Bible. And when you find stuff out, you ought to give God the glory. When you discover a cure for a disease, you ought to give God the glory because it is his glory to conceal that. And your glory is to search it out. You as mankind must study and search until you find out. But mankind, upon seeking and searching to find things out on the earth, because of the fact that they never give God the glory, not largely, they largely do not give God the glory. They always end up with just 99% of the truth and never 100. And so are just largely condemned. Broad road that leads to destruction that many enter into. They're always just five seconds away from the door, but never actually enter in unfortunately for them so they will have walked in a glory that is of man it they will have walked in a glory that is self-exalting without really giving the true maker glory who is god mm. so you will be discoverers of all manner and kinds of stuff and be awarded all different kinds of nobel prizes and science awards and what a what a awards and comprehensively imagine yourself haughtily intelligent for finding stuff out for deliberately refusing to acknowledge that the stuff you sought out and found was given you to god to find out it was given you by god to discover penicillin it was given you by god to discover antiretroviral treatment for hiv after it ransacked people with death within just three to five years of contracting the virus it was given to the human race to find a way to survive this earth's destructive force that is killing the human race because we are sinners it is the glory of god to conceal a matter and the glory of man is to find out okay is to search it out that's what's good but mankind falls apart when they self-glorify apart from acknowledgement of god there is only a remnant of human beings on the planet that find out the real deal truth they're christians they go beyond that space that that 99 percent and they just kind of hit the 100 percent bullseye and according to the scriptures they are few the road is narrow that leads to life and few they be that find it wisdom is acquired only in the fear of the lord and those who seek out gold and silver digging into the deepest trenches of the earth and going into the loftiest heights have sought it out and not found it because they have refused to go to god mankind have refused to go to god so they only get so far and no further and there are only one batch of people that find out the whole truth and they are hated by the world they are despised so despised are they that a whole pseudoscience spurred up from the woodworks to explain them away 
psychology is a replacement for religion it thoroughly is it wants to do away with the reality of god and in the 21st century there is an intermingling of psychology sometimes with religion because people are trying to use i guess psychological principles to explain even what it is that they are going through spiritually due to the fact that there is just so much truth in psychological findings there is so much truth so because it is so relatable you often hear christians speaking stuff like i've got post-traumatic stress disorder you've you've you've, you've got christians are just talking about how it is that they have suppressed certain truths and they've buried them deep into their subconscious and uh as this is because of the fact that they they've got a childhood trauma like all different kinds of talk speech that is very psychological because of the fact that it is partially true it's partially true but it has been leavened and so it leavens the whole lump it will never ever get uprooted out of us to continue to speak psychological terminology all the way up until the lord returns and basically recalibrates scales wheat grows among the tares and truth grows among the truth of the falsehood right uh and the lord will only 100 percent purify that which is even leavened understanding even in the body of christ at the end of the ages but for now we're gonna grow up with it we're gonna keep mixing it but i have a, a theory not a theory it's not a theory it is not a theory it is a a commentary on a theory yeah i think we should call it that whatever okay about what in the world was going on with sigmund freud and maslow all these guys pretty much psychologists theorists of old for me it's that what 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 my theory is or my commentary on their theories is that they were seeking and they were searching but not in christ it's written in god's word seek and you will find knock the door will be open to you they were trying to understand things that were plaguing probing matters in society and not enough people was looking at them and they made it a determination to identify this thing because they saw that there was something to it but with with the rebellion in their bones to look at god they were rebellious they did not want to look at god but they they saw that there was something otherworldly spiritual and they called it psychological going on here there's something spiritual but then they called it psychological and they're like there's something psychological going on here we cannot ignore it much longer western medicine went on to call it a pseudoscience it was initially rejected ultimately it got embraced because everybody agreed that there was something else going on here and it was a nice little replacement for religion coupled with the fact that it also came with pills later on medication okay very well so every so often because of the 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 mild veracity of certain psychological principles i use them in my videos because these people have indeed found the truth but i add to it i make a commentary on the theory that you know i said that how i said that i have a theory but it's not really a theory it's not mine originally uh it's freud's but i add to it to basically arrive the 99 percent veracity to 100 percent or the 75 percent veracity to 100 percent i push this barometer to 100 percent because we are looking for jesus here we are not looking for a way to explain away god in a world that is evidencing that he exists and that there is no solution to all of our ills and our psychological problems apart from him psychological of which is actually really truly spiritual problems apart from him okay having spoken that which is this is this one's for you it's wrapped in a little crazy box with a ribbon on it a bow and it's got like glitter it's also shining and this one's for you i want to explain to you what's going on over there with your psychological disorder because you're mentally ill but you can interchange the word psychological from for spiritual but seeing as you are trying to do away with god just like sigmund freud just like skinner just like maslow what we're gonna do here is award you an opportunity to reconcile psychology with spirituality that you might perhaps get born again to see that 99 percent just doesn't cut it you need a hundred okay you just need redemption at all at this point you're exhausting me i'm very tired i'm blood red like my sweater because you are exhausting you are excruciating you roll over me with, like with the steamroller and i pass away immediately when you come in the room and i don't like that i don't think anyone does 
but you're acting like it's all good in the hood because remember anonymity let's talk about freud's theory of the psyche okay mm. something i studied at varsity briefly uh but it's stuck it's stuck it's stuck that's what's good so we are glad that it's stuck mm. listen i'm tired all right freud has got this like theory of the psyche or basically the theory of the spirit okay like proper it's a spirit it's a spirit that's why it's not my theory it's actually freud's but it's not really freud's it's god's uh, but freud explained away god by calling it a psyche so i'm just using christian terminology aj in these streets like he has this theory of the psyche otherwise known as the theory of the spirit mm, yeah that is totes 100 true but because it completely ignores god it's got leaven in it it's got leaven to help understand what's going on in society in these streets okay uh, why mankind does what they do what, what's with that you know mm. i'm very tired god have mercy on me oh my goodness wow <sighs> cannonballs cannonballs just being thrown at me and i'm just like you know i'm boing boing back at yeah except i've actually got true impetus because i belong to the real god uh okay but let's get back, back to the point in freud's theory of the psyche he there's like this mountain berg like an icebergy type of picture that is drawn in the textbooks like mountain berg think titanic okay and in this like berg this this little iceberg um the portion that is underneath is called the id and then next to the id in this iceberg there's like a section on the left that is underneath the water and then a portion of it is also above the water and that's called the ego and then the the mountain basically that's popping out about to crash into the titanic that's called the super ego and the whole thing is like called freud's theory of the psyche so what's underneath there is your id and then on the side your ego and then up tops is your super ego so every time people are out just singing beyonce's song on some such a big ego using the word ego is really from freud's theory of the psyche it's so caught fire in society that you now just use that word without even understanding its origin an ego is basically that which makes a person stand on the mountain top and bash their chest like king kong on some figure manja i've arrived i'm in these streets and i'm not going anywhere step aside i'm moving in yeah that's that's the ego right and it is exactly explainable by that very analogy by that very example by that very um explanation it is pomp it's arrogance and it's what it is under heaven that has uh, somewhat succeeded to regulate your random strangeness until one day you found out about witchcraft and just flew out the door anyway let's talk about the the ego the id and the super ego okay let's first talk about the, the stuff underneath the the water the portion of the iceberg that's underneath right called the id otherwise known as that which is within your primitive space your basic instincts your subconscious that which just kind of regulates you without you even really truly really thinking about it what would be called second nature the id or the identifier all right is that which regulates your basic instincts your basic instincts okay so i need to poop i need to pee i need to eat i need to, whatever are your natural basic primitive drives that apart from you heeding them you're basically not human you've got to be you would have to be catatonic a vegetable a zombie you would have to be plugged to machines for you to not automatically operate responsibly to your id because it's that which is your basic basic instincts that you cater to you cater to even babies operate at that level from the moment they come out of their mother's wombs from the moment they're in their frankly at conception babies operate at the id level they need to poop they need to pee they need to eat they have these basic urges these basic drives right and they operate in them very naturally but somewhere along the way as you get older you get trained to regulate them that's where the ego comes in right you get trained to not do them just however or whenever you want to do them like babies with everybody within the id you need to pee that's it and however when you get to a certain point you can't just pee because you need to pee you know how babies wear a diaper they just pee when they need to pee they just poop when they need to poop when they are hungry they just cry that you might feed them they, they whenever their basic instincts are not met they 
act in such a way so as to eradicate that need. They cry when they need to eat. They poop in their diaper just at the moment when the poop is there to come out. They don't wait for it. They don't hold it in. They are incontinent because they are babies. That's what's good. They operate only on the ID. And then there's the ego. The ego is frankly your ego. You are too legit to quit. You cannot once your ego is established. And this happens around potty training time when babies get a little bit older. Mm -hmm. They get potty trained. They basically get made to frown upon peeing and pooping immediately just when they need to pee and poop. They need to be trained that when you need to pee, you must delay the gratification of peeing by first walking to the bathroom, putting down your pants and then peeing. The ego regulates that. The ego regulates that when you are hungry, you need to go to the kitchen and make a sandwich and then eat. Don't just throw your toys out the cot and cry. When you are hungry, come to mommy and be like, mom, I, I'm hungry. Instead of be like, oh, ask for food. Then you will be given food. When you are sleepy, if at all, it's not yet time for you to sleep. You need to fight that sleep and only sleep at this particular time. Otherwise, you're going to wake up too early. So you make war with sleep. You will know how your ego operates when you are studying. You're sleepy. You're yawning over your textbooks, but you don't just sleep. Because if you do, you're going to fail your exam. So... You get up and you grab coffee in the kitchen. You walk around the complex to give yourself some air. And then you go back to the books. Because your ego is telling you that sleeping is presently irresponsible. You will do it later. The ego is responsible for delayed gratification. That's what I'm getting at. Okay? It tells you to wait until it's time. You hold your urine in until you get to a toilet. You hold your... You get my point. Your ego tells you not to go in your panties. Alrighty, cool beans and banana peels. Then there is the super ego. That then caters into consideration society. It takes into consideration moral compass. That which is considered right in the sight of all. That which is the thing that regulates us all. This is where now Freud is trying to do away with our consciences. He's trying to do away with that invisible quality of God that gives us a moral compass the law of god it is written in god's word that the law of god is written on our hearts that he came to bring the law down not so much to save us but to condemn us with it because the law confirms that which already dwells in our hearts and when then it's written you are without excuse do you understand when then moses was given the tablets everybody was without excuse because they were already with a conscience when they did certain things the lord just confirmed that which they already knew very very well so now, how do you deal with the fact that babies just have an inherent, like as children, kids from a certain age, they just have, have an inherent understanding of wrong and right. They just get it from the moment they're kids. How do you explain why societies generally, all of them, agree on what is right and what is wrong across the board? Why, why do they not change their minds? Why did we all, even before laws were passed down, agree that lying is wrong? Why? Why? Did we all just agree before laws were passed down that killing is wrong, fighting, slapping another person is wrong, shoving another person, or being rude, or speaking with a high voice, uh, with a, an, an agitated, aggressive voice, uh, you know, like shouting at each other across societies? Why did we all just so ubiquitously agree that it's uncouth to have that tone in your voice? Something about it is wrong. A gentle answer turns away wrath. The law of God is on our hearts. And we automatically, as societies, just came to agree upon building civilizations that certain things are wrong and certain things are right, even though no one told us. No one told us. We just got it. Okay? Yeah. So, the superego, that, that thing that's hard to explain by science, can't nobody get why. People just get it across societies. Psychology rocked up to explain stuff like that. Stuff that cannot be spliced up and cut up on a cold bed in some kind of med school cadaver lesson you you you, you can't explain this you you just you can't but we know it's there and it is so poignant to influence the human race that we literally ubiquitously globally all of us agree on the same things that run our societies we ubiquitously agree and that's the only reason why societies have been able to thrive that moral compass where does it come from instead of freud calling it god the law of god written on your heart instead of freud calling it 
the invisible qualities of God, your conscience. Instead of Freud calling it what it is, he called it a superego. He called it a superego. Do you understand what I'm saying? It's basically that which regulates beyond even the ego. So the ego is the one that tells you don't poop in your pants. But the superego is the one that regulates where you poop when you don't poop in your pants, where you urinate when you don't urinate in your pants. Superego takes into consideration the eyes of society, what people think, because Freud stops at people. He does not graduate past people. He does not enter into a transcendent realm. He does not go to God. He imagines that we are regulated by each other's eyes. We look on with frowns on our faces. We look down upon sniffing it, certain behavior. And that's apparently, allegedly, the reason why we don't do one another dirty. It's written in God's word that the human heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. If at all it was up to us, there is no telling what we can do. The nth degree, the most. So no, trust me, you guys, you are not regulated by each other, even in the slightest. It is the common grace of God that is applying in society to keep you in a bunch. Not only does his law apply because it's written on your hearts, but your consciences right brittle your behavior because he makes it painful for you to ignore your consciences he gives you guilt it is a restrainer there is something that he is pulling or pushing down in you to ascertain that you cannot just continue acting a fool in these streets if it was not for god restraining you you would ignore your conscience because it would be seared and you would therefore no longer feel guilt. Hence the innovation of such terminology as a psychopath. That is a person, that a sociopath, a, psycho, a psychopath, individual that has been seared in their consciences because they have so allowed themselves to disregard their consciences that eventually they burned it with a hot iron. Where now, if they were initially, their first murder was kind of sore in their stride. And then the second was sore, but not as sore as the first. The third was sore, but not as sore as the first and the second until eventually once they're now a serial killer, once they're now Pablo Escobar, terrorist of Colombia, once you are that thing and killing is of no consequence to you, now your conscience has officially been seared. So therefore, if there was no ubiquitous common grace of God applying all over creation, making sure that human beings are maintained in guilt, maintained in their consciences, staying them from doing certain things. Yeah, you would do the most if there was no... And you're going to know in the tribulation just how much you are not keeping yourselves in a bunch. You are going to know because the restrainer is going to be removed. And when the restrainer is removed, God's common grace is lifted. Meaning that the reality, the veracity of the human heart being deceitful above all things and desperately wicked is going to be experienced. So too will all of your most righteous works being like filthy rags be clear. You are going to easily hand your own brothers and sisters over to be killed, to be beheaded by the Antichrist system. You're going to take the mark of the beast. You are going to worship a mere mortal. You are going to justify heinous acts that now today you would never fathom you would ever walk in. You are going to get there evidencing that you've never kept yourselves in the bunch so freud's super ego is fallen and mistaken for those reasons because freud disregards god altogether he disregards god and so for the, the like i said some truth to his theory but leaven right it leavens the lump that's what's good he disregards god thinking that we somehow are inherently good that we as societies have somehow kept each other in a bunch the super ego considers moral compass it says that we keep ourselves in a bunch because we care what other people think. We care what other people think. And he, in then explaining it further, expanding on it further, he, an example is used on some. With the super ego, for instance, so you, the ID says I need to poop. The, or pee, for those of you who are disturbed by the prospect of pooping. The ID says I need to pee. The ego says I need to use the toilet. But the super ego says I need to make sure no, sorry, the ID, no, okay, the ID says I need to pee. The ego says I need to pee outside of my pants. In other words, I need to bring down my pants, I need to bring down my skirt and squat and actually do the number one only then. So don't muddy your garments. That's what the ego says. Don't pee on yourself. Because I mean, who does that, right? Mm. You are no longer incontinent, but the super ego says I need to use a toilet. The superego tells you that you don't just 
as you're walking, ting, 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 in the street. And oh, ting, 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 your bladder is now full. You operate in the ego when you bring down your pants, squat on the street and pee. You are operating in the ego on that day because you are not peeing in your own pants. But you're doing it in public. People are looking at you. What in the world are you doing? So the super ego is the one that tells you run to the nearest bathroom. Run to the nearest public toilet. The super ego is the one that tells you hide in a corner if you're men. You know how you stand by a wall and you watch to make sure that nobody sees that you are you're whipping your manhood like in public society to do the number one. Mm, that's what's good. Yeah, the super ego is the one that tells you to pee somewhere where people are not going to be ogling at all of your nether regions as you release stools. Mm, that's what's good. Yeah. However, the super, I get the super ego takes into consideration your environment, what society thinks about you. Where Freud, again, falls violently short is in the fact that he does not account for God. So that which I call the super ego squared, otherwise known as the eye of God, further regulates mankind. So in the instance of the dude that's out here peeing behind a wall, just making sure that nobody sees him. If a bus drives by full of school kids, he's going to be embarrassed on some, oh snap, no, I didn't want them to see me doing the number one in front of a wall. I was kind of hoping that I was going to do the number one from start to finish with no one seeing. I'm hiding behind a wall because I'm hoping that no one sees me. It's like what we used to do back in the day when we would party. And then as we were driving from, well, I don't know, the party back home or just or from one spot to the other and somebody's super pressed to pee, you know how they would like stop the car in the middle of the highway and then like your friend would stand in front of you and you would bring down your panties and you would pee like right there squatting on the highway hoping that nobody stops the police don't stop nobody finds you essentially you are peeing in public but like you are doing it in a conspicuous way that is concealed to make sure that nobody sees you you would never do that during the day you are doing it precisely because it's night time and the highway is scantily perused by vehicles scantily driven on by vehicles at that particular time of night so you are highly likely going to get away with this super ego disregarding the behavior you would never do it in any other time but if you were to get busted by police coming boop, boop, or any other vehicle flashing you there would be what blushed cheeks you would be embarrassed you would be abashed you would be embarrassed you would be embarrassed by the fact that you were committing acts of public indecency you were polluting in public you were peeing or pooping in public something you would not have done during the day the super ego evidence or rather, or rather the shortfalls in the super ego evidence to us all or at least it ought mm, that we are detrimentally in in danger as human beings when we run with nothing but each other as a barometer by which to gauge each, each other's behavior we are we we fall violently short detrimentally skating on some crazy ice that is very very skinny when we lean on each other as a way to riddle ourselves from doing the most because there are certain things that can be done by the human race away from other eyes of human beings that are abominable that are shocking that are disturbing that are dastardly that are disgraceful that are menacing that are inhuman that are the act of terrorism and these things upon being concealed bring a lot of sorrow, a lot of pain, a lot of trauma, a lot of tragedy. And sometimes the smoking gun cannot be found. Fingerprints cannot be dusted. In other words, people who have done these things cannot be found. But there are casualties. There are deaths. Genocide has been committed. Somebody needs to be held accountable. But this person has been a smooth criminal. Yeah. What in the world regulates us to a point of averting entropy? Comprehensive destruction. What is the thing that prevents us from finishing ourselves off? Given that the human heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked, Freud's superego speaks about society regulating one another. It also accounts for things like crimes. They're committed by those who have limited respect or regard for the superego. Because they imagine that insofar as they can conceal themselves behind a veil of anonymity, they can therefore do the most. Explaining therefore why criminals commit crimes in the dark, in secrecy. Why they wear gloves. Why they wear ballot lovers. Why they conceal their identity, all that jazz. They do it that the superego might be evaded. In a society 
where people can escape the superego just by wearing a mask over their faces and some gloves to prevent fingerprints from latching onto a surface. There is no justice possible for some. There is no justice possible for some. That conscience that we have is a sense of justice. It's a sense of God's justice. It is a recalibrator. It's written in God's word that God hates unequal scales. He finds it an abomination, the acquittal of the wicked and the condemnation of the righteous. He does not like that which is imbalanced. He is just because he's just and we're made in his image. Even though we are fallen, there is something regulating us that makes us unable to walk in an, in a skewed um, disposition. And so we feel, like I said, guilty. And also, um, if at all, we're not the ones that have committed the injustice. We feel enraged. There is um, complaint. Society laments. They mourn. They reel. It's written in God's word that when a wicked man takes on power, the world around him, the society around him, people around him grieve, they mourn, they reel. But when a righteous one, one takes power, they, they, they rejoice because wicked men and women inspire injustice in society. They inject it into the veins of everybody. And when injustice is prevailing, there is an uproar. People are unhappy to be maintained in that state. That is God's inherent sense of justice in us. So, in a society where some leave others l hanging by a thread at the mercy of this injustice, what in the world then is real? How, as society, do we recover from that? How, how in the world do we recover from smooth criminals, from really good criminals, from people who are excellent at hiding their flaws, their crimes? Those that have no regard for the superego, but conceal that they have no regard for it. They hide behind gloves and masks. What is to protect us from the most that they would do to society? They operate within the ID, the ego, and a false version of the superego. Who is to award justice to those that are dealing with excellent masqueraders of goodness? That is the big question that psychology cannot correct, it cannot fix. The, 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 the problem of injustice, the problem of the fact that there are blind spots in the human race. We cannot surveil each other sufficiently. We are not omnipresent. That is the thing that cannot be explained away by Freud. Why it is that despite there being some on the earth that have no regard for the superego, we somehow strangely are a growing concern. Centuries progress, millennia progress, and the human race does not implode. It does not reach entropy. We know there are people who disregard the rules. We know that there are people that do not care for the superego. We know. They don't care for how society feels about a matter. And yet somehow we are thriving as a society. Still to this day, we are alive. The earth has only gotten bigger. Well, it stayed the same size, but like the population has grown bigger. We've got 8 billion people now in these streets. That's what's good. How have we gotten to 8 billion souls on the earth with so many people having no regard for the superego? They would have cataclysmized, cata uh, what is it, cataclysmized, if that's even a word. They would have comprehensively they would have wreaked catastrophe they would have imploded the ecosystems they would have caused a great deal of damage how can i describe this like in management there is something called the Pareto principle basically it speaks or it alludes to within any ecosystem of chaos or disaster there tends to have been only 20 percent of inputs that contributed to that destruction to like 80%, the Pareto principle is like an 80-20 principle, right? Where it is that 80% of the damage caused in any given ecosystem has only been caused by 20% of the inputs. Only a small number of people have contributed or only a small number of inputs factors have contributed to this level of damage. So much destruction has been caused by this little force. And the Pareto principle is unfortunately has unfortunately been in operation the, pretty much since the beginning of time. Adam and Eve are like a perfect example. Two men, two people, two human beings ruined it for all of us. Ruined it for literally everybody. It's always the destructive kid in the classroom that causes 80% of the kids to fail in a subject because they weren't able to concentrate on time. It's always the five people in the organization that are underperforming that ruin the performance outcomes or the, the 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 bottom line forecasts for the whole team like the whole company does not reach its goals because of only 20 percent of staff like that that's you know what i mean like the, that like the Pareto principle is just has just been like a thing all throughout the human race 
in any given situation, it's always the one destructive person that wreaks havoc in way too many people. In the lives of way too many people. A serial killer in a town disturbs the peace of the entire town, bereaves an entire town, a small number contributing to the destruction of, of many. So while most people are inherently self-preserving because that's what God will have us be, there are some who are destructive. Look at Judas was the only disciple that fell apart and look at the disaster that that caused. It's always just the one dude or the two dudes or the three in a group that cause a great deal of destruction. Yeah. So all throughout history, many of the calamities that have slapped us upside the head have been induced into our ecosystems by a small number of human beings. Hitler was one man with a strange book, Mein Kampf, that ultimately he fruition, he realized it, he put it into action and won for himself a whole merciless batch of supporters that massacred millions of Jews. One dude started that whole nasty and he spoke on behalf of Germany, who after the US rescued the Jews in those death camps, had to now be held culpably responsible for Hitler's crimes, even though some of them were not about their business. A small number of people wreak a great deal of havoc in any given ecosystem. So all the calamities and the ills of the human race from the beginning to date have been as a result of a small number of peace-hating randos. Peace-hating randos, do you understand what I'm saying? That ruin it for the rest of us. And I, I'm also personally privy to that sorrow in my own life where it is that it, it has been it was one girl at MTN that sparked the downward trajectory of dominoes tipping that would ultimately cost me my entire career and thus future it was one woman one woman that random Indian chick started lies in everybody it caught fire they all ended up burning they ended up capitulating where he is it's like that chick caused chaos in my life and everybody was like a looter you know looting somebody who people who pillage they steal because there's already chaos in the room but they would not have stolen if there was no chaos that one chick tipped a dom domino that caused a great deal of immorality in the rest of my colleagues one girl one girl has cost so many people's futures and souls in light of my particular case so given that the human race is is, is tipped over and decimated by so a small number of people given that so much calamity is caused by such a small number of people given that horrible ideologies catch fire having been commenced by one or two men given that false doctrine destructive heresies cults start because of one or two people the world ultimately ends because of one or two people that influenced everybody else and we are there we are at near entropy as a global citizenship because of those that have no regard for the super ego do you understand and the reason why they have gotten to this point of having no regard to the superego is because of the fact that they have no fear for the fact that the superego is not where it ends. We are not each other's barometer. We have no fear of each other because we can perish. We can be shot in the head and cease to exist. We can be neutralized. We can be silenced. That's why MTN got away with as much murder as they did. They just impoverished me, make sure I don't win my cases. Basically cut my head off the South African map. And so therefore stayed themselves from ever having to endure a lawsuit from against a woman sorry a lawsuit against themselves from a woman that was done bad she was done dirty by a company that just fired her without cause having started that stupid little domino tipping downward that boulder that was falling down a mountain about to hit a village started from one girl and that one girl has basically made mtn vicariously liable for the level of calamity that ultimately fell in my life and also the level of wickedness that my other colleagues walked in so much damage caused by one boulder falling from the top of a mountain mm. and the reason why all this entropy is being reached is due to a disregard altogether of more than just human beings more than just people do you understand what i'm saying as what we need to look at to gauge our behavior it's written in God's word that the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom and the knowledge and knowledge of the Holy One brings understanding. When you fear God, your superego is a superego squared. It's a superego to an exponent to. It is a superego above people. We indeed do regulate each other, but only because the, car, the restrainer of Jesus Christ, of God, is still in operation. But there's going to come a time in the human race where you're going to see just how bad you can be. Just how deceitful your heart is and desperately wicked. You're going to find out just what you can do as a human race now that the Lord has removed his hand of restraint. So you leaning on each other has led you to this entropy. Two 
20% of people on the earth have brought you to this entropy. They have influenced you with all these wicked ideologies. Hollywood, the entertainment industry, especially in America, is an entertainment industry in one country on the earth and it is largely concentrated in one state in america california do you understand what i'm saying and yet one state in the us of a has reddened reddened as in the color red the whole planet Pareto principle in your face it has muddied the entertainment industries of all other countries and influenced people down in these streets it has changed laws of countries it has made the planet Sodom. America, or shall I say California, has made planet Earth Sodom. One little state in a country has destroyed the world. One state, Silicon, like guys, are you, are you, are you heeding what I'm saying? Seeing as we are headed towards entropy because of a silly number of people on the earth, who is going to rescue us from this body of death like it's written in Romans 7? Who's going to rescue us from ourselves? When we start to make stupid decisions, when society's moral convictions as to what is inherently right starts to meander, metamorphosize, change, grow fur, who is going to protect us from that irrationality? Because the superego depends, and during the time of Freud, it could have worked. The superego depends on us being basically commonsensical, just at a minimum being commonsensical. But common sense is no longer common sense, is it? That which is true is entirely contested. It's been spoken of as relative. That which is inerrant and immutable and unmovable is strangely being calculated as potentially movable. Facts on the earth, like gender, are being contested. And global citizens are being influenced by a small number of people to believe uncontestable facts. Society is falling apart. The Pareto principle is in operation. That which was at some point absolutely wrong is now on shaky ground thanks to america largely like pedophilia for instance which once upon a time in all of our eyes human beings eyes our eyes was absolutely wrong is now negotiable it's not negotiable it's, it's got parameters it's got constraints you know and so far as you exceed this then it's wrong otherwise it's largely you know it can be okay people are negotiating for things that have kept society in a bunch things that have kept us all all right all these centuries, all these millennia, they are contesting them, they're, they're disputing them. Women are being made to compete with men in sports. We are having our reproductive veracity questioned as to it belonging to us only with a certain number of chromosomes because apparently men can also bear children. It's ridiculous what is going on. And this then is starting to blow Freud's theory out the water, is it not? It is starting to blow his theory of the psyche in dealing with the superego out of the water it is saying that freud if at all we are regulated by each other come and live in the 21st century and see what they're saying see what they're doing look on the left and look on the right of what is going on in the 21st century and tell me if this is a, a thriving society that has still got time to go when that which is societally acceptable and morally embraced looks like this when it looks like this when it looks like this segment can this society thrive? His answer would highly unlikely be yes. He came up with a psychological theory, otherwise known as a spiritual theory, that could only work for his era because people were yet to go super crazy back then. But now, this super ego that is societally managed is out here displaying that human beings, goodness, uh, the heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Who can tell what's going to happen next tomorrow? If all we have is each other, we are literally w w we're screwed, guys. We, 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 we can not do what is right consistently we are mutable we are changing we change even it has become clear especially in the last 10 to 20 years we change our minds against even that which is incontestable fact we change our minds but god is not a man that he should lie or send a man to change his mind the god of heaven does not change that which is right in his sight is right and it never changes he is black and white there is never any shadow of gray with the lord so therefore you need a super ego to the nth degree you need an, an, an additional regulating force in society other than human beings because the day has is fast approaching where other people's opinions or other people's view of you are no longer relevant to maintain a, a moral acceptability absolutely in the sight of a holy God, not in the sight of each other because moral absolutes are now today contested richly. Moral absolutes are richly contested today causing 
angst in society and a great deal of injustice against those that are right. That's what's going on. And with that continuing in the trajectory that is continuing in, we are headed nowhere but towards entropy. And the small number of very influential people that are destroying the earth, tearing it up, are currently not being held accountable by anything or anyone because an increasing number of members in society are anticipating that we all ought to be tolerant towards their change of ideology. Their change of ideology. The world is literally falling apart. And we are told we can not make war with them without partaking in hate speech. Look at how in Canada, they are literally threatening to arrest people through legislation that have participated in what is called hate speech, a, a broad term there that is unqualified as to what exactly it, it, it entails. And so they can just arrest you for simply disagreeing that there are more than two genders, stuff like that. Like it's all being thrown out the water. According to the super ego, we run with what society thinks and presently society is changing its mind about basic fundamental things that have very importantly kept us in a bunch. They are in disagreement with them meaning that we are no longer safe. That which was once considered just is now considered intolerant. And so therefore, more and more people are going to be ostracized and marginalized in society, albeit having been right. And historically, they would have been protected, but now they're not anymore. But under Freud's theory of the psyche, under the superego of Freud, this is a mutable matter. It's, a, it's an ebb and a flow. It's a changing structure based on whatever the cultural morality or norm is. If at all, your morality is premised around what your culture agrees. There is no speculating then what society could at some point end up agreeing is moral. There was a time when abortion was just abominable in the sight of most. Now it is largely embraced by the majority of the world while we look like bigots who stand against it. With these things just continuing to change and change down the road, the can being kicked further down the road, Ultimately, the day is going to come when Bible prophecy being fulfilled. Good is called evil and evil is called good. Everything is now upside down. Bitter is called sweet. Woe to them who call bitter sweet, who call good evil. That's going to be happening. That which is morally absolute is going to be morally intolerant. According to what is the standard of morality that has cascaded down, cascaded down a road because of a can being kicked that has been formulated or concocted by mere mortals that are mutable, that keep changing. And so therefore, even that which is moral and indisputably, indisputably right will then have a different color tomorrow. That which is indisputably fact is being disputed in this 21st century. That's the world that we are all presently living in. And it's dangerous. Do you understand what I'm saying? Freud's superego does not account for a mutable society, a changing society. He formulated that theory based on his belief that society would largely remain of one value set maintained in light of what makes for what's right and what makes for what is wrong. He would likely wince at modern society if he was still alive because of just how bizarre things are now today. And which is, I, I spoke that whole long thing to get to this particular point now. When a society operates on a super ego that is only regulated by other people and not so much a super ego squared or a super ego to the nth degree that caters into consideration the eyes of God and not so much of human beings, society then ends up being regressed, never mind to the ego, but now to the ID. The ID of which is what? Primitive urges. It's eat, 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 sex, 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 drink, 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 poop, 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 poop pee, 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 sleep, sleep, sleep. And when you operate in this fundamental space only, like a baby, you will take what you want insofar as there is a veil of anonymity and the superego of society has come to agree that what you're doing is not wrong. When a society does not believe that what you're doing is not wrong, then there is no need for you to imagine that your ego is going to get bruised when they bust you doing it. And sometimes, precisely because of the veil of anonymity above your deeds, you don't even care that perhaps if you were to get caught and found wanting, your ego might actually be brought into question too. A society that is increasingly changing its mind about what is right and acceptable at some point regresses back to the status of babies. Grunting, just running on nothing but your basic instincts. You want it and you just get it. Microwave babies. No longer are we inspired unto delayed gratification anymore. Nobody is being taught to wait for what they need. You just pee on the spot. You just poop on the spot. You just eat or you just cry and scream when you're hungry, hoping that your mama's gonna put a spoon in your mouth 
and start feeding you. You just do what you want. Sex, you grab it at a whim. You just rape. You just take what you want. You are operating in the ID. In the ID. In basic primitive instincts. Because the superego is being eroded away at. When God is not your moral compass. When he is not your moral absolute. When he is not the thing you fear. When he is not what you look at in order to gauge what to do next. When God is not your superego. Or in my terminology, superego squared. When God is not your superego to the nth degree. There is no end as to what you can do. Especially... In a society whose morality is changing, it's shifting as to what's wrong and what's right. And you are maintained in some kind of a veil of anonymity. There is a, a way for you to conceal what you are doing that might be frowned upon by society. Right now, it is still largely frowned upon to rape. It is still largely frowned upon to force a person to do what they don't want to do. It is still largely frowned upon to just pee in public, etc. But there are people... Who have discovered a way to comprehensively eradicate never mind the superego but even the superego squared they don't believe in the superego squared they just believe in the eyes of other human beings it's they're called these human beings i almost call them it they might as well be at this point because you're more like neander like you're like more like zombies mm. witches you operate in the id you operate in your basic instincts you see something that you want that you desire and you just go and get it you don't even look around first like the person that is super duper pressed to pee and so their ego is telling them i can't just pee in my pants but the super ego is being eluded in that i'm in a park at a funny strange hour in the morning i'm just gonna quickly put down my pants and pee right here i wouldn't do this during the day but i'm gonna do it now because i need to pee right now and i don't have time to be running to no toilet mm. witches don't even take time to look around to see if anybody's watching because they trust the anonymity of their craft they trust that it is so veiled from society that they can do it as and when they desire they just cast spells on anything and everyone inspired by nothing but their primitive desires nothing but their basic instincts freud's theory of the spirit otherwise known as the psyche is essentially him trying to explain human behavior from a certain space without however getting to the point of comprehending that the human heart is a seafill above all things and desperately wicked we can do nothing good no not one super ego won't cut it we need more we need god he got to 99 percent. there was some truth to what he wrote however apart from the super ego squared from god there is no maintaining civil civility in any nation in any ecosystem and we are about to y'all not, not we why am i putting myself in that equation y'all are about to find out in the worst way in the tribulation just what a world without the super ego squares restraining power can look like just what in other words the spiritual climate not the psychological but spiritual because this here is spiritual Freud's theory of the psyche is spiritual but he called it psychological the spiritual climate of the world you are going to find out what it looks like when there is no super ego squared restraining just what people do Already there are hints to it, foreshadowings of it, in this modern society, prior to the rapture. We can already see that people are flipping good and evil, calling bittersweet wada wada fish paste. What's gonna happen, you guys? Eh? What is going to happen when there is no more restrainer? You're gonna butt heads with each other. You're gonna rape in the streets. I already prophesied this. You are gonna pee and poop in public and not care what anybody has to say. You are going to operate in your basic instincts in the streets. You are going to walk into a store and just take some bread and get out. Already purge laws in California and America have caused people to walk into stores and just take what they want and get out. The tribulation is going to be a far worse example of that. Women are going to be getting raped in the streets, I told you guys. Kids are going to become cannibals eating flesh of people just to survive. There will no longer be any restraint on what human beings can do and you're gonna see the most you're gonna see the worst you are going to miss a time when those who were speaking voices those who were sounding reason on the rooftops like abu Garabu, you're gonna miss us you're gonna yo guys you're gonna miss the time when there were these irritating people trying to tell you how to live you're going to realize that apart from them being maintained in a neat little bunch society would fall apart those who are filled by the holy spirit are the restrainer the Holy Spirit who hovers around ubiquitously on the earth with common grace is restraining. But he's going to stop doing that work. He is still omnipresent, however. He will not be fulfilling that particular job. 
and then you will see just how evil you can get as human beings. Freud and his theories are not sufficient to do away with the fact that when you find out that witchcraft works, you suddenly become a baby again. A baby. Where upon needing to poop, you just do it on the spot. Upon needing to pee, you just do it on the spot. Upon needing to have sex, you just do it on the spot. Basically, your basic drives, your urges, whatever they might be, when you want to eat, you just cry. When, you, when you've got an itch, you just, you just scratch. There's nothing that stays you. You don't have a sense of delayed gratification. You don't have time to wait. You don't ask people if they are happy to participate in certain deeds with you. You just take what you want. I keep saying Gorobella get rape. And I had another dream of Gorobella that slapped me from a celebrity in this country. And the reason why I had to labor, going in a labyrinth, a maze to get to this point is because precisely because he's a celebrity. Precisely because he's in the entertainment industry. If I were to come Kipe, if I were to come and expose him with his nakedness, he would hide behind the veil of, of course you're going to sound crazy because I'm a star. He's going to look like this mad woman that's now accusing a star. Like the guy's not even looking at you. And then next thing, not only are you accusing random people without even DMing you of slapping you with Gorobella experimenting. Now you've literally gone and fished a whole celebrity. It's not the first time. I've dreamt about a very prolific celebrity in this country, all up in my grill, Gagorobela. And my question was, how in the world did they even find my ministry? Who in the world am I? Bang Zabela guy. And I'm going to talk to that in the next part because I've already been speaking for an hour, 17 minutes. These are people who are operating in the ego, sorry, in the ID, having imagined that there is no need for the ego, seeing as this thing is anonymous. They've got an, an ego to a certain extent. They would never just rape, right? A man that wants to have sex would never just grab a woman on the street and just pull down her pants and rape her. If, especially if you're like a beloved celebrity in the country. But super ego is the problem here, right? Other human beings don't see what you're doing. Veil of anonymity are you concealing what you're doing. Country, who are your eyes around, has legalized your practices. They have said that your witchcraft is okay. Just make sure you don't murder, you know? Just make sure you don't steal, NJ. Boy, don't go to Sun City where some red or some orange dangaris. Don't do strange stuff, but in so, in so, far, you, in so far as you keep yourself in a bunch, you're good. You've got a constitutional right to a freedom of religion, Nangish. That's what's good. So, seeing as the country has seen it for not to regulate how far it goes, you can just bewitch anyone into oblivion. In so far as you don't go into pick and pay and steal some bread, you're cool. Just make sure, however, that if you're gonna steal bread, you're using your constitutional right to a freedom of religion. Mm. Steal it spiritually, then you're good, my boy. Here it is that your society's moral fiber, moral compass is ebbing and flowing like the ocean. It's changing. And so they approve your sorcery. They have even invited you to be a member of an organization. And so therefore, they're helping you rape a woman. Therefore, your ego is not bruised. Your ID, however, is being satiated. You want something, you're just getting it. And you trust that this woman, if she dares mention you, oh my goodness, you'll just say, we are shy, Yo, next part.